It's unfortunate, but in today's newer vehicles, we can no longer easily replace the factory radio. If we want to add aftermarket amplifiers, we need to take the factory signal and convert it from speaker level to RCA low level for our new amps. To do this, we can use a line output converter, or we can use one of these, a digital signal processor. But what is the difference? A DSP is oftentimes more expensive. Do we really need it? Let's explore and find out the differences between an LOC and a DSP. So here on the left, we have our line output converters I'm gonna be talking about, and here on the right, we have our digital signal processor. Let's start with talking about the LOCs. Understand that there's two different types of line output converter. There is active and there's passive, and both of these here are active line output converters. The way to tell the difference is with a passive line output converter, you're not going to have any power connections, and with an active one, you are. For the sake of this video, we're gonna be focusing only on active line output converters. Active LOCs are preferred because they give us a stronger output voltage, which leads to a cleaner signal and better sound. On all LOCs, you're gonna have a connection here to connect to the speaker wires of the vehicle. This allows you to bring the signal from the factory source unit into the LOC, and then it can convert it to a low level signal that we can send out on our RCA wires. Those RCA wires then of course connect downstream to our aftermarket amplifiers. Now the LC2i here by Audio Control is more of a premium LOC because it does have some added functionality like their AccuBase system. AccuBase restores factory bass roll off from the factory system. On this LOC, they also have some other features. They have two sets of outputs that we can control independently as well. Setting wise for LOCs, the thing that you're gonna see most commonly for an adjustment is just the output level. Now it is important to understand that there are multiple different versions of line output converters. This one here is the LC2i, emphasis on the two, because it gives us two input channels. This is another example of a line output converter, but this time we see the seven. That's because it has six channels of input plus AccuBase on this particular model. So what is the value of having more input channels? Well, the whole purpose of line output converters is to interface with our factory audio system and in many factory premium systems that will have a tweeter in the sail panel or a mid-range down in the door where they're dividing the signals going to those different speakers. A lot of times in order to sum those signals back to a full range signal where we have frequencies from 20 Hertz up to 20,000 Hertz, we will need to do what's called channel summing. With a device like this LOC, I can have the tweeters coming in on these two channels, I could have mid-range coming in on these two channels, and woofers coming in on these two channels, and I can sum all of those signals for one common output. Other than the channel summing though, these two line output converters are very similar. We still have the AccuBase in this case, since these are audio control, but much like this one, they both have the level adjustment. So it can get kind of confusing because this line output converter, it seems pretty advanced. It has a lot of different connections. It has a bunch of dials on the top. Why is a DSP here an improvement? After all, with a DSP, we still have our speaker level inputs that connect to our factory system. We still have our outputs. It looks like there's more of them to go to our amplifiers, but hey, there's like no dials on top or anything. So how, how is this advantageous to this? The added functionality of a DSP comes through being able to be connected to a computer via USB, or in the case of this DSP, we can add on this module here, which allows us to connect over Bluetooth and control the device with our smartphone or our tablet. I think that the absence of any dials or controls on top of the DSP is where some of the confusion comes from, where people are like, why would I pay more for a DSP? With a DSP, once we get into the software, we can still do the signal summing, much like this device. We can, of course, control our levels for each of the output channels, but that is where the similarities end. The DSP also gives us the ability to control our crossovers, which allows us to limit the bandwidth of music that's going to each speaker. We can control the equalization of the signal on every output channel of this DSP, and we can control time alignment for each of these channels. If you don't know what time alignment is, check out one of my related videos up in the corner of the screen. Now I wanna give you some advice for why you might wanna choose a line output converter over a 
DSP and also why you might wanna choose a DSP over a line output converter. A big advantage for using a DSP is a lot of times with an OEM sound system, what the manufacturer will do is they'll actually apply their own EQ curve to each of the speakers in the system. What that means is if we measured the electrical signal response going to one of the speakers in the factory sound system, it's not going to be just flat like this. They're already gonna have their own EQ curve that they've applied to improve the sound of their stock speakers. When we go to upgrade the audio system, we're going to want to fix this curve. Another way to kind of understand this is imagine that you have a fast performance car and you've taken that car and it's no longer stock. You've added a bunch of new upgrades and performance mods to the engine and the vehicle. You know that in order to get the best performance out of the vehicle now that you've modified everything is you're gonna have to take it to a tuner and have it retuned. An aftermarket car audio system is very similar because we're gonna have this factory tune here and once we start swapping out speakers and amplifiers and other performance upgrades, we need to be able to retune and correct that and we can do this with a digital signal processor. This is a downfall of the line output converter because we cannot control the equalization with these. I do wanna say a quick thank you to Audio Control for being a monthly channel sponsor. I've been using the DM810s in several of my builds lately. And one of the things I really like about these is they have the ability to allow you to look at the electrical signal like you guys can see here on screen. You can see that there's currently a factory EQ curve applied and just using the software in this DSP, we can correct that curve back to flat before we do our acoustic tuning. There's a ton of different digital signal processors out there on the market, but to learn more about this one right here, the Audio Control DM810, check out the link down in the video description. If you want to truly have full control over your sound and be able to tune your audio system, you're going to want to choose the DSP. But there is something important to understand. When you go to tune a DSP, you're likely going to need other tools like an RTA, which is a real-time analyzer, to fully set up the DSP to its full potential. I mention this because I've actually seen a lot of cases where people will install a DSP in the system and then they just basically use it as a line output converter. They don't even control the EQ. They don't set any of the time alignment. Make sure you do your research on how to tune. I have a video that discusses the tuning process up here and I'll put it down in the video description. Now, when should you choose a line output converter over a DSP? Like I just mentioned, if you don't have a ton of specialized tools, you don't need them necessarily to set up LOCs. Additionally, a line output converter doesn't require as high of a budget. There's also the size comparison. Obviously a line output converter is significant significantly smaller and much easier to tuck away in an install. And finally, I think it's worth noting if at the end of the day, all you're looking to do is just add a subwoofer to your system and a subwoofer amplifier, I think that a digital signal processor for the most part is overkill and you're gonna be more than happy with just a simple active line output converter. So that leads us to our question of the episode based on this information, what do you think is the right choice for your system, an LOC or a DSP? Or for those of you that already have your system set up what LOC or DSP are you currently running in your system. A special thanks to Audio Control for being a monthly channel sponsor. Learn more about the DM810 at the link down in the video description. Also, a special thanks to Lani, Ali, William, Marco, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to those guys for making these videos possible. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to design, build, and install. I'll see you guys in the next video.